Okay, hello, it is 8 p.m. on September 18th, 2020, and welcome to the weather update. Uh, much more improving conditions uh, later this evening. Uh, we've seen the smoke breaking up in the sky. I'm going to show you what it looks like. The smoke haze is breaking up. The sun is actually pretty bright at sunset. And uh, you can see there, the smoke haze is definitely breaking up nicely. Uh, that's a pretty nice sunset. But you see that it's scattering out. It's, it's, uh, so things we should be improving uh, as the smoke pushes to the south of us. Uh, before we get to, uh, further on our weather, boy, we've got a full plate of storms here to deal with. Uh, and yes, we are now two. We have two Greek, al Greek alphabet names with this tropical, tropical storm. So we got Teddy. We got Wilford. We got Subtropical Storm Alfred, which is all the way on the right right hand corner of the screen here. So Subtropical Alpha, I should say, Subtropical Storm Alpha and Beta, which just formed in the Gulf. So uh, yeah, this is uh, this is not so. I guess we'll start with Teddy. All right. <laughs> it just never ends. I'm telling you, it just never ends with Teddy, with these tropical systems. Uh, I've never seen it. This is the earliest in the year that we've gone to the grief. It only happened once before, and this is the earliest. We're ahead of it by at least two or three weeks. So uh, as of 8 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, large and powerful Hurricane Teddy is churning over the central Atlantic. Large swells are spreading across much of the western Atlantic, increasing rip current threat. So as of 8 p.m., 23.5 north and 57.0 west is its location, about 770 miles southeast of Bermuda. Maximum stain winds are 125 miles an hour, so it's weakened to a Category 3, moving northwest at 14 miles an hour, and minimum central press 951 millibars, or 28.08 inches. So it's weakened slightly. So tropical storm watch is now in effect for Bermuda. Uh, hurricane force, this is a large storm by the way, hurricane force winds extend outward up to 60 miles from the center and tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 230 miles from the center. So this is a very large storm and the estimated minimum central pressure is 951 millibars or 28.80 inches. We already read that. Okay, so uh, that's, uh, let's, let's look at the, uh, the cone for Teddy uh, and you will see it keeps it a major hurricane until it passes Bermuda. So it may weaken slightly, it may strengthen again. Um, uh, you might go back up to a Category 4 again, uh, but then it'll probably become a, ca a Category 3 when it passes like close to Bermuda and then slowly weaken. Uh, but look at this. this. This is the cone right here, and it looks like Nova Scotia's in that cone uh, as well as Newfoundland uh, right now. And, it, and they have a uh, hurricane. It looks like they have a, uh, as a, su a subtropical hurricane or whatever, uh, but uh, this is going to be really bad if it winds up hitting this area. And we still have to keep an eye on it if it comes closer, comes to the west again. Uh, it's still, uh, you know, it's still a lot of uncertainty with the storm, and Bermuda still has to watch it too, of course. Um, so they say it's transitioned to a post-tropical cyclone as it moves near portions of Atlantic Canada, where there is an increasing risk of direct impacts from wind, rain, and storm surge. Uh, and the swells, uh, we're going to be feeling them here uh, in the next couple of days, too, uh, from Teddy. Okay, so that, that's Teddy. All right, so Teddy. Then we had Wilford here. That's the next one that formed. So we'll go in order here. Uh, this is Tropical Storm Wilford right here. This is the map for it. It has it, has it just staying a tropical storm and then just weakening to a depression because the conditions are going to get unfavorable for it uh, with a lot of shear once it moves further west. Uh, so let's take a look at the public advisory for Wilford. Uh, and it says Wilford could strengthen overnight. So as of 5 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, its location is 12.5 north, 34.4 west, about 735 miles west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands, and maximum stain winds 40 miles an hour, moving west-northwest at 18 miles an hour. So it's moving at a good clip. Minimum central pressure is 1,008 millibars at 29.77 inches. Uh, and tropical storm force winds extend out up to 140 miles from the center, by the way. So it's kind of a large storm as well, uh, but it will weaken according to the forecast. Uh, you can see where it is tracking. So this, again, is tropical storm Wilford. Okay. Now we got Alpha. Let's go to Alpha here. So it's all the way on the right-hand corner. So, uh, y and here you go. This is, what, this is uh, pretty much what everything, this is the satellite image here. kind of shows you everything, by the way. Uh, but we've got to look for Alpha. All right, so let's let's go back here. I must have clicked here. You know, we'll just click here because it's a subtropical storm alpha. Okay, 
Subtropical Storm Alpha. So uh, let's get the latest public advisory for Alpha. It is expected to dissipate tomorrow. So that's the good news. Uh, and all this will be a week one and it won't stick around for long. But summary as of 9 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 40.4 uh, north, 8.4 west, about 120 miles north northeast of Lisbon, Portugal. Max will stay in winds at 45 miles an hour or, and the moving northeast at 17 miles an hour. Minimum central pressure 998 millibars or 29.47 inches. And uh, this uh, extends out up to 35. So, so Alpha is pretty weak. Um, and we'll look at all of these on the satellite image. Uh, the more imminent threat to the United States is going to be Beta. Uh, and uh, this is Tropical Storm Beta that has just formed. Uh, so Beta uh, is expected to strengthen and probably become a hurricane. It's probably going to become a hurricane. The models seem to indicate that. And this could threaten the Gulf Coast, unfortunately. It's not what we want to hear. Uh, these people in the, the storm-ravaged Gulf Coast may have to be watching another hurricane. So the depression becomes a tropical storm beta. And Alpha and Beta formed within like a day of each other. I think formed on the same day, which is very rare for that to happen as well. Uh, once we get into the Greek alphabet, of course, this is the earliest again that we've ever gotten there. So as of 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time, its location is 24.3 north, 93.1 west, about 335 miles east northeast of east northeast of Tampica, Mexico, Tampico, Mexico, or about 280 miles east southeast of the mouth of the Rio Grande. Maximum sustained winds are 40 miles an hour. Moving north northeast at 9 miles an hour. Minimum sun pressure 1,004 millibars or 29.65 inches. And um, right now, according to this, they say they, they oh, the tropical storm force winds extend outwards to 105 miles from the center. And when we look at the track on this, this is what becomes a concern here. Uh, and uh, they are saying this is going to become a hurricane, and it could threaten. Uh, parts of the Texas coast, not sure exactly where yet, South Texas coast, because um, the steering currents are very weak with this. So it's not like we know we have a good idea where Teddy is going. Uh, this is a lot more uncertain, uh, and uh, we're going to have to really keep, uh, you know, because there's no steering currents, very weak steering currents there. Okay, so let's take a look at the satellite images to all these storms. Uh, let's take a look at Teddy right now. We'll first start with Teddy. So here's Teddy. Hurricane Teddy still looking pretty healthy. Uh, look at that. Perfect symmetry. Clear eye. Solid eye wall. This thing is a monster. And it's huge too, by the way. Uh, let's go look at the... Visible shortwave. Let's look at that. So it should show us the visible during the day and the shortwave at night. So let's see. You can see... I like this transition because you get to see the visible and you get to see the convection around the eye. The eye is actually clearer on infrared, uh, but uh, which usually means that there's a lot more low clouds in the eye than high clouds. But uh, either way, uh, you can really see the convection there right around the center as the sun sets and hits those cloud tops uh, there. That's, that's quite a storm right there. Uh, so let's go look at the sp spaghetti models for Teddy. Uh, and this, uh, you can see, it kind of keeps it over Nova Scotia here. It doesn't really take it further west, fortunately. Most of them are keeping it away from the United States, but Nova Scotia and um, Newfoundland, the Canadian Maritimes, are definitely going to have to watch out. Uh, we can also take it a step further, look at the GFS and ensembles for Teddy there, which kind of show the strength, and it's going to be pretty strong because, again, those warm waters, it's not going it's, it's to hold on to its strength. Um, that's that's for sure. So that's Teddy. Um, look at all these. They still have a. They still have this as 22 uh, here. Let's look at Wilford. This is Wilford here. Not quite as organized yet, and it's going to start getting sheared once it moves further west uh, because there's a trough that it's going to run into. So this is probably not going to become a hurricane as far as Wilford goes. Um, let's look at Alpha. This is Alpha, by the way. Pretty distorted satellite here. It's, it's a subtropical. It's very poorly organized. But it has tropical characteristics, so it gets a name. It's actually saying remnants of Alpha now. So, Alpha's already dissipating. It's not... Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? This computer's... Okay. Now we go to 22, which already is, uh... Which already is beta. So this is what beta. This is beta right now. I have to update the site. But this is what beta looks like right now. 
So you can definitely see some convection here. Some really solid convection going on uh, around. So this thing is going to strengthen. You know, it's over the Gulf, and the Gulf is really, uh, you know, very favorable right now for these storms. Um, so let's go to the MODIS high resolution satellite. So we go to this. So look at all of this and the smoke on the high resolution satellite for the day. Let's all that. Okay, I don't have the West Coast one in yet. Okay, so just wanted to show you the West Coast. You see all the smoke that's still, these fires are still ongoing. They're trying to get them under control, but uh, you'll see here that the smoke is getting pushed down uh, by the flow out of Canada. So we're going to get this clear, nice clear air coming out of Canada right now. Look at all the smoke here gotten tied up. This is subtropical storm alpha, or is that Paulette? No, that's subtropical storm alpha. So this is what's left of Paulette. So this is actually going to make it all the way to Europe, this smoke. Uh, here is Hurricane Teddy. Looking pretty healthy right there. Look at how big it is too. Again, if you put if you put that over if you put that over Florida, it would cover the entire state, and then some. Um, and here is Wilford, looking kind of weak. It's not really going to be very. Uh, but this is Beta here, and Beta definitely looks look, looks impressive. I think that's going to be the that's going to become a hurricane. Uh, but the good news for us in all this is that we have. This nice cool air that's coming down. Let me clear this out. Uh, and we'll draw the nice cool air coming. This flow coming right out of Canada. It's actually pushing the smoke away, too. So we're not going to have to deal with any of the smoke. It's going away. Uh, and we're going to have nice clear skies. Uh, and that's uh, something we, uh, that def we didn't get the last time. It was pretty disappointing. But we'll, we'll definitely see some clear skies now. So let's go to the models. And we'll first start with the upper air, and uh, I do want to, again, make it uh, give us the North Atlantic view on the upper air so we get an idea of everything, right? It's where everything is and what's happening. Uh, so, start with the upper air. Okay. So, here's Teddy. And here is beta. Those are the two main storms to keep your uh, keep our eye on. All right. So here's that trough coming down. Here's the ridge here. So it's going to kind of steer Teddy to the west. Weak steering currents in the Gulf. So uh, beta is uh, beta is going to meander around a little bit. Uh, and then here comes. And again, we still have the trough over these, so it's going to keep us cool. But what's going to happen is you got this ridge here that's building to the north, and a trough that kind of cuts off and grabs. You can see how it kind of grabs Teddy and slams it into Nova Scotia. Uh, so we're going to have to keep an eye on this pattern. This is the same kind of pattern that gave us Sandy, by the way, just in a different location. Uh, it's set up over here versus over here. That could always change. We're still a week away, oh, a little less than a week away, five days away from this thing getting closer, and then we'll have a better idea. Here's Beta, and it looks like Beta makes a landfall somewhere in southern Texas there. Um, the, the good news is we have this continued troughiness in these, but then you start seeing a ridge, but no, nah, we still have, continue to have the troughiness. So it's good. And after that, hopefully the tropics will calm down, maybe? Maybe? Um, you know, who knows? It's hard to say. There's so many systems that the, that are going, uh, and I guess that's, all right, so this is what's left of Paulette. That's going to get gra grabbed in and, and actually shunted to the south around this, this uh, the trough, that subtropical storm, Alpha. And, uh, yeah, really uh, interesting to see this. So let me go back to the CONUS. Well, actually, no, 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 go back. we got to go back. Yeah, we got to go back. Yeah, that's it. we got to go to the Euro. Because every model has their own different opinion on what's going to happen. So this is the European model. And you can see the same idea here with the Euro, but it, it takes it just a little further west, and we're going to feel the effects of Teddy, I think. We're going to start, we're going to have some effects from it around Tuesday. Uh, the high surf on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, maybe even some stronger winds, too, um, on the, at least on the track that it's going. And this, by the way, is beta right there. So it looks like there's an agreement on some kind of landfall in southern Texas right now. Okay, so now we can change this to the CONUS regions. I'll go back to the GFS and we'll look at the surface. Oh boy, so much stuff to so much stuff to go over. 
I've never, I've, I've never seen so much going on in the atmosphere at once. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, so here's that high building in, brings us nice weather. Here is beta tightening up. Probably could, it probably could become a hurricane by Sunday. Make a landfall in southern Texas, perhaps around um, what it is. It's, uh, it's, it's southern Texas, that area. I'm trying to think of major cities around there. Um, Corpus Christi, I think, uh, could make landfall around there. Uh, and then it's gonna, not going to move very much. It's going to kind of sit, and then it actually brings it back out over the coast again and, and, and rakes the whole Gulf Coast, and then it sits it over uh, Louisiana before finally going in. That is really going to be a bad scenario for the Gulf right there. really is. It, it really is going to be a bad But for us, um, we're going to have just beautiful weather. That high is going to sit over us. Uh, you see that tight gradient there? That's Teddy. You can see we're going to feel some of the winds from that into next week. Uh, and then just one, just lots of nice weather for us. Uh, it looks like something else tries to get going over here, too. So uh, there's a lot going on. And it's a lot also for the models to process, too. I'm not even going to go beyond that as far as the long range goes because we have enough in the next five to ten days to watch. I'm not even going to even go beyond that at this point. Uh, so let's go take a closer look at Teddy. I mean, Let's take a closer look. Well, we got to look at Teddy, and we got to look at right, where we start. All right, so we'll first start with Teddy. Uh, all right, now there is one for Atlantic Canada. Uh, there should be an option here, but I'm trying to find it. Somebody said that there was an option for Atlantic Canada um, on these models, but I don't see it here. Oh, there it is, Southeast Canada. Okay, so here we go. This is gonna. This is what Teddy could look like when it makes landfall. Uh, this is on the GFS. So look at that. That is pretty deep, and that is pretty wrapped up right there. 944 millibar low, a hurricane. Uh, it's going to make a landfall right on Nova Scotia, and this is going to be devastating. I don't know if they've ever had a hurricane like this in Nova Scotia before, if this winds up happening. Uh, and if we look at the winds here, look at that. Those winds are... This is going to... This could... This could this, this is going to be, look at that, I mean, this is going to be a Category 3 hurricane. Uh, and then it, it only just starts to weaken a little bit as it gets closer to the coast. This is going to be devastating. Um, devastating uh, for that area. Absolutely devastating. Uh, and we, and it's a large storm, too. So Maine could have some effects. They said Teddy is something we are really going to have to watch. Uh, because uh, this is, and I'll, I'll keep you updated on this. Uh, every day we're gonna have to follow this. Um, so that is that is that is really disturbing. Um, to see that kind of wind field, and it just it just holds on to its strength. It just holds on to its strength. It's unbelievable. Uh, so let's go to the comp. All right. So let's go to the uh, northeast United States here, and we'll look at our weather. Oh wait, we're not done yet. That's right. I gotta look at beta too. Okay, South Central. All right, so let's take a look at beta here. We'll go back to the precipitation too. So here's beta. You can see it's strengthening, getting wrapped up there. As in, right before landfall, it strengthens, which is always a bad thing. So it makes it a, gives it a landfall Monday morning over southern Texas, and has it just sit there. And then look at that; it just sits there all week. They get flooding rains, and then it moves back out over the water and strengthens again, and then winds up in Louisiana and sits offshore before finally moving inland uh, a, a week from this Sunday. It's unbelievable. It really is. How much rain could that possibly drop? Let's, let's take a look and see. Total accumulated precip. Oh, my God. Yeah, so you're looking at two feet of rain again or more. Uh, so you're going to have the same kind of flooding that we saw with... Uh, with Sally uh, going on in this area, too. I don't think the winds will be as bad. I don't think it's going to be as strong of a storm as Sally. Uh, but uh, it's probably, if it becomes a hurricane, it probably won't go past Category 1. But then again, you never know. Um, you see there, look at that wind field there. Uh, come in, and, and it kind of just weakens, and the wind isn't much of an issue, but then you got to deal with the rain. And then the wind field picks up again as it gets back over the water again. And that's because of this strong blocking high over the over the east coast because the jet stream is just all now we're in a favorable jet stream position we're in the trough luckily uh, so it's going to keep protect us but for those stuck in the unfavorable position 
Uh, this is what they have to deal with, and the Gulf is really becoming one of those places that's really uninhabitable. The whole Gulf Coast due to climate change. Between the tropical storms, the heat, and the humidity, it's not a good situation. So, let's go to our weather. And the good news is our weather should be pretty nice. And we won't have to deal with too much craziness in our area. Uh, for some reason, we are being protected. Thank God. So, uh, for uh, Saturday, gonna be very after a very cool night, we're dropping into the low to mid-50s tonight. We're only going to get into the mid-60s tomorrow, mid to upper 60s maybe. And then another cool night, possibly 40s uh, for, for Saturday night. And then Sunday, even cooler. Highs only in the low. We'll probably struggle to reach 65. Uh, and then a Monday, same deal, mid-60s. Warms up a little closer to 70 on Tuesday. And then we start seeing a little more warm air being dragged up from uh, Teddy. Uh, so the temperatures start warming up by Tuesday and Wednesday next week. We're up around 80 degrees again. So feeling a little oddly enough right after the first day of fall. It just feels like it wants to get warm again. Uh, it's messed up. Astronomical fall anyway. So let's look at the dew points. And dew points stay low. We're going to have nice low humidity. Dew points dropping to the 30s, perhaps 20s. Northeast breeze, pretty strong northeast breeze. We're going to have that northeast breeze on Sunday, too. Dew points staying low. Same thing for Monday. Dew points staying low. You can see there is Teddy passing off to our east. Uh, and we're still going to have strong northwest winds. And then once Teddy leaves, we'll have a little more uh, humidity, but nothing really terrible. Um, so let's go look at the skies. All right, so here is... the tunnels and you can see that front it, it looks like it might just get hung up to the south a little bit but we should have a clear day over long island no problems um maybe a little more toward atlantic city you might be dealing with a little cirrus that pulls away on sunday we may have a little cloudiness here i'm not sure if that's high clouds or low clouds let's see Is that low clouds or high clouds i'll put the low cloud fraction it looks like a mix a mix let's see i think it is just low clouds might, that might be being overdone, too. So we should have mostly sunny days both those days. Monday, mostly sunny, too. <coughs> Tuesday, look at what happens. You can see the clouds from uh, from um, Teddy possibly affecting parts of Long Island. Uh, and then uh, that moves away. We have another nice day Wednesday, Thursday. Plenty of sunny skies. Uh, plenty of nice weather. Uh, uh, we're very lucky with that. Let's look at the NAM cloud cover. So, again, keeps the clouds more or less to our south. So we should be fine on Long Island. Should be a beautiful day on Long Island. And uh, much of New Jersey, too, as well. Um, Sunday, a few more clouds around. Yeah, I think there'll be more clouds around Sunday. Probably That's probably why maybe the temperature's a little lower. Uh, but other than that, I mean, yeah, Saturday will probably be the sunnier of those days. Probably have a little more clouds on Sunday. You can also look at the R-Jam, too, if you want, as far as sky cover goes. So, uh, again, similar idea. Most of the clouds stay off to the south, though. So, and it really looks like it keeps even Jersey clear. Uh, well, Jersey stays clear except for the southern tip, I think, like Atlantic City further south. Sunday we'll see more more in the way of clouds, I think. But still, mm, just a few clouds, not all that bad. Uh, okay, I think we'll uh, wrap up this weather update. So... There's a lot to follow, and uh, keep your posts on it all. We've got a lot going on in the atmosphere. Uh, never seen it like this, and the active pattern continues, but God is watching over us and keeping us safe here on Long Island, thank God. So take care.